Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and the light unto my path. Good evening, this is Pastor Spencer from Messiah Lutheran Church in Salem, Oregon. Tonight is Cinco de Mayo, the 5th of May, Anno Domini 2021. It is a Wednesday evening. And tonight our psalm is the 54th psalm. And we finish up the 5th chapter of St. John's Gospel. Now, if I mess up tonight, forgive me, I had my second shot for COVID, and I'm feeling rather lightheaded, but other than that, I'm doing well. Take a moment, grab a glass of your favorite beverage, mine is coffee, and a snack if you desire, and we'll get started in just a moment. The 54th Psalm, we begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, save me by your name, and vindicate me by your might. O God, hear my prayer, give ear to the words of my mouth. For strangers have risen against me, ruthless men seek my life. They do not set God before themselves. Behold, God is my helper. The Lord is the upholder of my life. He will return the evil to my enemies. In your faithfulness put an end to them. With a free will offering I will sacrifice to you. I will give thanks to your name. O Lord, for it is good, for he has delivered me from every trouble, and my eye has looked in triumph on my enemies. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. And our prayer for this evening. Lord our God, who desires not the death of the wicked, convert those who hate us without a cause, and turn the heart of those who persecute your Christians. Protect the poor and the innocent against the oppression of the unjust men. Grant us patience under the cross, and preserve us in the true faith to our end. In Jesus' holy name. Amen. And tonight, as I said, we will finish up chapter 5 of St. John's Gospel, verses 45 through 47. Now, leading up to this, Jesus has been in a dialogue with the uh, temple officials, might be Pharisees, chief priests, scribes, etc., and challenging them on the basis of do they understand who the Son of Man is, or who Jesus is. Have they really listened to God, or do they just love listening to those people who will tickle their ears and compliment them and make them feel good about themselves? And, of course, we see that in our world today, all over. You say any negative thing, if, even if you're trying to show someone that the sin, and indeed, we believers aren't afraid of confessing our sin. We are bold to confess it because we know Christ went to the cross for it. Not that we go out of our way to sin, but we always admit who we are because we also know who He is because of who we are. So tonight we continue with the discussion. Verse 40, uh, 45. But do not think I accuse you before the Father. Your accuser is Moses, on whom your hopes are set. If you believed Moses, you would have believed me, for he wrote about me. But, since you do not believe what he wrote, how are you going to believe what I say? Wow. You know, people do this all the time. They take a portion of the scripture they like, and they will concentrate and focus on that, and, and throw away the rest. People were looking for a Messiah in the day of Jesus, a Messiah that would deliver Zion from captivity of the Roman soldiers that were there. And they were looking for themselves to be glorified rather than to deal with any oppression or darkness or, or sin. They uh, wanted to hear how great they were and how much they deserved things. Well, 
That's exactly what this entitlement age that we live in is all about. People will say, but I'm entitled to it. And if we really got what we were entitled to, all we would get is eternal death and damnation. The reality is, none of us deserve eternal life. Now, Luther didn't like anybody to use math to prove what we deserve or what we don't deserve, because here's the reality. If you lived a perfect life for 80 years, you don't deserve eternity. And the reality is, no one lives a perfect life, do they? Other than Jesus. All of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And so, here were these people thinking that they knew what was best. Jesus points not to himself, but to Moses and says, Moses accuses you. Moses, who is considered to be the father of the law. And not just the Ten Commandments, but all the rules and regulations laid down in Levitical law. They accuse the man. They show how man has sinned in thought, word, and deed. And if they were looking to Moses, trying to be truly obedient to Moses, they also would have heard his words of gospel. Yes, Moses shared gospel. That there would be someone greater than himself that would come. All the Old Testament points to Jesus. It points to the cross. It points to the price that's going to be paid. The whole sacrificial system was set up so the once and for all sacrifice could be made for our atonement and for our salvation. Jesus came to do that. And so Jesus points these people and says, Listen, if you've been paying attention to Moses, which you don't honor, whom you claim is so great, you would have already realized that I'm the one he wrote about, the one he spoke about. But they don't view it that way. They don't want to really see the sin in their lives. They don't want to recognize it. And so instead they will focus on what they've been able to do and like most people they'll choose what they consider to be their favorite parts of scripture. And that will be all that they will focus on. But there's more to it than that. And so, again, we need to take a look to the cross of Christ. That's where our salvation is. That's where our hope is. The law will convict us. It will kill us and tell us we are sinners. To which we have to say, yes, we are. And Jesus will say, for those sins I died. And yes, he did. He paid the price in full. He became propitiation. He paid the debt that was due. And then turned around and gave us the gift of sonship, of adoption, that we are sons and daughters of God because of the blood of Jesus. That's all I have for you tonight. So sit down, relax, let it soak in. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you, be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you his peace. For his word is indeed a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your path. God's blessings. Have a great night in the Lord.